You can increase your effectiveness by learning to operate your unit's AC motor safely and efficiently. A good place to begin is with starting. To start most of your motors, you need only push the start button at a local or remote station. This action does not directly start the motor, but sends a current to a motor starter or controller. The starter may be housed in a substation, like this starter for a 2300 volt motor. Or it may be in an outdoor cubicle. This starter is also for a 2300 volt motor. Starter housings vary considerably in design. The starters in this outdoor bank are for 480 volt motors. Whatever the design, the starter housing contains a magnetic switch. Current from the start button circuit energizes the magnetic switch, which closes the electrical circuits to the motor. Some motors start with full voltage. Others draw such high starting current that they are designed to start on reduced voltage, with full voltage cut in after the motor has started. In either case, the magnetic switch makes it possible to keep voltage low for safety at local and remote stations. Whatever the motor's requirements, voltage at the starting station is never more than 480. Electric motors need protection against overloading, under voltage, and short circuits. Without protection, any of these can destroy a motor. Overloading may have either a mechanical or electrical origin. Overloading often occurs while starting a motor. Starting current is often six to ten times as much as running current. Heat production varies as the square of the current. This means that starting heat production is 36 to 100 times the production while running. Overload relays are designed to break electrical circuits before a motor can be damaged by overheating. Under voltage requires a motor to draw more current and therefore to produce more heat. Overload relays help to protect a motor against under voltage. The magnetic starter also provides some protection. Low voltage tends to weaken the magnetic field and allow the power line contacts to open. Short circuits also cause excessive heat production. Overload relays work too slowly to prevent damage from short circuits. Fuses or circuit breakers provide this protection. Generally, after an overload relay has stopped a motor, the relay must be reset before the motor can be started again. If low voltage has opened an overload relay, the relay must be reset before the motor can be restarted. Low voltage protection that opens the magnetic starter contacts merely requires pressing the start button. In low voltage release protection, the motor starts automatically when the low voltage is corrected. For safety, you must know about any such motors on your unit. When a short circuit or other condition has blown a fuse, first correct the condition, then replace the fuse. When a short circuit or other condition has opened a circuit breaker, the condition should be corrected first. Then the circuit breaker must be reset. You should make certain pre-start checks if you are about to start an electric motor for the first time, for the first time after it has been repaired, or for the first time after it has been idle for a long time. Follow your tag-out, lock-out procedures. Check the motor shaft to be sure it is free to rotate. A good way to check the shaft is to try to turn it by hand. If it is not free to rotate, it must be freed before you start the motor. Also check the lubrication system. Be sure reservoirs, lubricators, oil mist systems, and oil and grease cups contain the proper kinds and amounts of lubricant. Check mechanical work motor properly installed, coupling connected, etc. Check safety and housekeeping. Coupling guard, ground wire, and other safety equipment installed, and area clean and free of hazards. Turn to your workbook now and complete exercise number four, 
If you have any questions, ask your instructor. The starting procedure for an electric motor is very simple, but is also very important. Press the start button firmly. Release it at once. Do not hold the start button down. A motor is often temporarily overloaded on startup. Holding the start button down when there is an overload pits and damages the starter switch contacts. Do not bump the motor by pressing start and stop buttons two or more times in rapid alternation. Bumping may overheat the motor. Bumping is especially undesirable when a motor is overloaded. An example of a heavy overload is a motor coupled to a pump filled with cold, hardened asphalt. In a moment we will see some general restrictions on the frequency of starting electric motors. Note that your unit procedures may be more restrictive. For motors of 50 horsepower and lower, no more than three evenly spaced starts may be made per hour, as in automatic control. To give motors a chance to cool off, they must be run at least 15 minutes between consecutive starts. In similar situations, a motor of 51 to 1500 horsepower must not be started more than once in a one-hour period. If continuous running is to follow, allowing the motor to cool, a 50 horsepower motor or smaller may be started six times in evenly spaced eight-second starts during the hour just before continuous running. In the same situation, a motor rated at 51 to 1500 horsepower must not be started more than three times in evenly spaced eight-second starts. The number of consecutive eight-second applications of locked rotor current, as in jogging, is limited to a maximum of three for motors of 50 horsepower and below. More simply, if the motor doesn't start or kicks out, don't try to start it more than three times. If the motor's horsepower rating is from 51 to 1500, don't try to start it more than twice. Follow unit procedures from your operating manual or other written source for motors rated at more than 1500 horsepower. Also remember that your specific unit procedures apply in preference to any general procedures. The purpose of restrictions on starting motors is to prevent excessive heat buildup that certainly harms a motor in the course of time and may destroy it very rapidly. The heat produced by an electric motor is amazing. This 700 horsepower motor drives a pump. For its size, its heat production is completely normal. Yet while running at design conditions, it produces enough heat to keep this three-bedroom home comfortable at an outside temperature of zero degrees Fahrenheit. And while starting, it produces as much heat as this process furnace. Yes, the rate of heat production while drawing starting current is the same as this process furnace. At rated load and speed, a motor's ventilation and cooling system removes the excess heat quickly enough to prevent damage. But it cannot remove heat during startup at anywhere near the rate that heat is being generated. So, if you bump the motor or start it too many times without allowing it to cool off, you run the risk of burning up the motor. It may end up looking like this. Actually, repeated attempts at starting can build up so much heat in the rotor that the copper bars will soften, deform, and destroy the motor. Operating checks and maintenance tasks must be performed regularly, several of them at least once per shift. Check each motor that is operating for excessive vibration. Usually just feeling the motor housing is a good enough check. If greater accuracy is required, both the amplitude and the frequency of vibration can be measured by the use of an instrument. Feeling the motor housing is also a good way to check the winding temperature. Some motors, especially the larger ones, have temperature probes embedded in their windings. 
In some cases, temperature indications are transmitted to control rooms. Check bearing temperatures by feeling the bearing housings. Any difference in the feel of the bearings on a motor is reason to suspect that one is overheating. Like winding temperatures, bearing temperatures are sometimes transmitted to control rooms. If a bearing is too hot, immediately check the action of the lubrication system and all lubricant levels. Whether or not bearings seem excessively hot, check lubricant levels regularly and refill with oil and grease as needed. Your lubrication chart will tell you the proper lubricants for the motor bearings. Check the motor load by reading the ammeter and comparing the reading with the amperes listed on the nameplate. A high reading indicates that the motor is overloaded. Where key motors normally run at near maximum current, ammeter readings may be transmitted to control rooms. Where no ammeter is provided, note any smoking of the motor. Smoking is an indication of probable overload. Reduce the load, shut down the motor, or notify your crew chief for head operator according to your local procedures. Also check the motor for cleanliness. More than mere appearance is involved. Dust and stray oil and grease are among an electric motor's worst enemies. Inside the motor, oil and grease may damage wiring insulation and cause shorting out. Outside, oil, grease, and dust interfere with the cooling of the motor and may cause it to overheat. Over-lubrication adds to the accumulation of oil, grease, and dirt. Also, over-lubrication can damage bearings. For most electric motors, stopping is a very simple procedure. Just push the stop button. For some motors, there is a local start-stop station. For others, the station is at a remote location, often inside a control room. In emergency, the motor may be stopped by throwing the circuit breaker in the motor starter, whether the starter is in an outside cubicle or is inside a substation. It's time for another workbook session. Exercise number five this time. If you have questions, ask your instructor.